If I didn't know you better, I would think you were trying to get rid of your two favorite acts. And we've only been here one month. And I loved every minute of it. No, I just don't want you to miss your plane. What do you mean you're not going home? Look, we were right. We're right. Nelson, I am trying to tell you about your Aunt May and I hearing two men planning a murder. I'm not getting involved in anything, okay? And don't start sweet talking to him because he's not going to help me. Even as a boy, he was tense. Go for it. Go All I said was we're going to be late. How did we get into this? Your aunts are right. They did overhear me planning a murder. Call the police, Milton. Just take care of those people. No strychnine? No nothing? If it was a murder, whoever did it was awfully good. Nothing bad will happen. Milton C. Hardcastle is a retired judge from the Los Angeles Superior Court. Mark McCormick, an ex-race car driver turned thief, was Hardcastle's last case. McCormick has been placed in the judge's custody, and together they're going after 200 cases that walked out of Hardcastle's courtroom on technicalities. Milton's 12th birthday. He hasn't changed a bit, has he, May? He still presses his lips together when he's angry. I don't think he liked that photographer too much. He never liked being called Milty. Hey, May, Aunt Zora, you don't want to be late and miss your plane. We'll be right down, Milton. We've only been here for a month. You'd think he'd like having his favorite aunts with him. I always used to wonder if I caused his asthma attacks. You remember when he said he wanted to grow up to be a cowboy? He was going to ride through town cleaning up the bad guys in the name of justice. Glad he outgrew that. Don't forget the books. Put these things out of sight. I don't think Milton likes when we read these books. You still won't tell me if the killer is the one-legged bird trainer? You don't want me to ruin it for you. Besides, what about the little man in the parking lot? Not him. I think it upset him that we suspected his gardener of burying bodies in the rose bushes. It was a logical deduction. How are we supposed to know that a dog buried all those bones? Besides, maybe it runs in the family. Milton's not the only one with a talent for investigating things. You want me to come up and help you? We're coming, dear. We don't have a lot of time to catch that plane, McCormick. We better take the freeway. glass of warm milk, Milton. You're so jumpy. Did you skip your warm milk, Judge? Shame on you. Just drive, okay? Come on, well, you were gonna be late. The plane leaves at 10. Judge, give me a break. This thing's got a cruise matic transmission in it. The top speed of 42 miles an hour. Where did you rent this thing, anyway? 
Well, the price was reasonable and it's a very sensible car. My Norbert always said, drive a Studebaker and you drive a car. <laughs> I never did understand what he meant, but he knew a lot about cars. And Mark drives so nicely, doesn't he? Thank you, Aunt May. And I'm usually very nervous in the car. What do you mean you're nervous? Don't you like the way I drive? I've been doing that for a month. Oh, you're getting the big kick out of this, aren't you? Let me tell you something. The minute they get on that plane, you and I are gonna have a little talk. May's right. Most boys Mark's age are reckless and inconsiderate. You turn your back for a moment, they're up to who knows what. It's nice to see there's still a place in the world for decency and good driving habits. All I said was we're going to be late. How did we get into this? Oh, don't be so sensitive, Milton. We're only trying to help. Yeah, I know that, Aunt May. I was just worried that you might miss your flight. We know that, dear. But you can catch more bees with honey than you can with vinegar. <laughs> Mark needs to be encouraged. And we don't want to see him end up back in the big house. Just drive. Now, now, Judge, use honey. Take care of the luggage, okay? And we'll meet you in the coffee shop. White zone is for immediate loading and unloading of passengers only. No parking. Oh, there it is. I've been looking all over for it. I wanted to read it on the plane. Oh, it's a great book. I just finished it myself. We think it's one of his better efforts. Oh, absolutely. Oh, by the way, did you get to the part where they find the delivery boy's body in five different rooms? Zora read it already. She won't tell me a thing. I think it was the dwarf in the parking lot. Oh. Yeah, well, now, we don't want to give away the ending, do we? Okay, your plane's going to leave in half an hour. We got to cut this short. Now, don't worry, Milton. We're leaving. <laughs> White zone is for immediate loading and unloading of passengers only. No parking. Your attention, please. Flight 79 from Phoenix. Now arriving at gate 12. Here, now, why don't you just order up some tea and I'll get down there and see about your seats. Why are you so nervous? If I didn't know you better, I would think you were trying to get rid of your two favorite acts. And we've only been here one month. And I loved every minute of it. No, I just don't want you to miss your plane. Ah, Milton, we're in an airport. There are lots of planes. I'll just find out about the seats. Even as a boy, he was tense. Can I get you ladies something? Right, straight up. Ginger back. Two. Last call for Mid-American's flight 52 to Seattle, Vancouver, and Anchorage. Now boarding gate four. Okay. I got the contracts. That's my end of the deal. When are you going to start? When you take care of your end. That's what I'm here for. You get me a car? Not only that, I got you his car. It's a more familiar part of the neighborhood. Nobody will be suspicious. Thank you. Listen, nobody's going to notice anything. His wife's out of town for two days. He'll be up there all alone. You switch his pills? Yeah, two weeks ago. There'll be no problem. He won't even notice it. If not, unless he looks close. Oh, don't do that. And uh, I want you to tell me, how long will it take for the, the drugs to pass out of his system? Probably not more than a couple of days. It's good to have that edge. Take me to the car. I'll be in touch when it's done. Passengers holding tickets for flight six. Does that sound to you like it sounded to me? Oh, come on. Here. I'll call you when it's done. All right, you know where to reach me. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 don't shoot. I'm not ready yet. Oh, that's much better. Now, come in a little closer. Aunt Margaret is going to be so excited about this. She's never seen a real Los Angeles sports car. All right, I'll be in touch. 
Now let's do one for Bessie Mae and Jack. Get the license plate. ACM 231. ACM. ACM 231. What do you mean you're not going home? If you'd stop shouting, I would tell you. I'm not shouting. That's such a temper. Have you ever heard about the paper boy throwing all his papers into the puddles? No. Vance or, uh... Judge, now wait a minute. You never told me about the paper boy. Come on. Last call for flight five, nonstop to Little Rock, Arkansas. Aunt Zora. Listen. Zora. Uh, Milton, I am trying to tell you about your Aunt May and I hearing two men planning a murder. Yes, and I took their pictures. Isn't that cool? That's wonderful. And when you get to Little Rock, you can take them straight to the Save Mart and get them developed, and then you can send them back to me, and I'll take them right to the police. I'm surprised at you, Milton. A man's life is at stake, and you know very well the Save Mart takes five days to get your pictures back. Aunt May, Aunt Zora, we're not going to do that anymore, are we? Didn't we talk about that last week? Now we're all through investigating and poking around. From now on, we're going to be sensible, aren't we? Your plane is going to take off any minute, and I think it'd be a real good idea if you were on it. Stop doing that! Damn! Can't you talk to me like I'm a person? Milton, stop swearing. May and I have decided to stay until you look into this. After all, you're an expert on the subject. Absolutely not. I am not looking into anything, and you two are getting on that Far West plane. Airlines Flight 79 from Phoenix to Flight Gate 12. I realize you're upset, Milton, but gritting your teeth and holding your breath is only going to give you high blood pressure. And that's the last thing he said, Milton. I'll talk to you when it's done. And you know what that means. Uh, Aunt May, and Sora, in that whole conversation, did anyone mention the word murder or kill or push him around, anything like that? Well, no, you but... You develop an ear for this sort of thing, Mark. Milton, this is right up your alley. You know all about these things. I wish you would stop pouting and participate. Oh, Am I part of this conversation? Don't be childish, dear. I'll tell you what I think. Since the two of you got here, you've uncovered at least a dozen nefarious schemes, none of which have amounted to anything. Now, only two days ago, you had a perfectly innocent man locked up in the tool shed because you were both convinced that he was kidnapping the neighborhood dogs. Well, we saw him put them into his truck. He works for the Humane Society, Aunt May. That's his job. And what about the coupon recycling scheme at the supermarket, huh? Huh? I'll never be able to cash a check there again, ever. Milton, if we're going to save a man's life, we're going to have to leave the past behind and work on this license plate. Nobody's listening to me. You're behaving just as you did when Zora brought the angel food cake for your birthday. <laughs> he wanted chocolate. <laughs> Stayed in his room for a week. Look, why don't you just run the plates? And that way we'll find out what's going on and Aunt May and Aunt Zora can go home with a clear conscience. It's that simple. Listen, if you want to stay in California, that's just great. You're my aunts, I love you, your room is still made up, but I'm not getting involved in anything, okay? And don't start sweet-talking to him because he's not going to help either. Got it. 144 South Benedict Place. Isn't he clever? Yes. I never doubted it. I don't <laughs> understand, Mark. With those big blue eyes and that curly hair, you must have to fight them all. Yeah, I do. But, you know, your nephew usually has less exciting things planned, if you know what I mean. Oh, don't bother about it. He's an old softy. He always yeah. liked it when I tickled the back of his neck, made him gentle as a lamb. You tickled the back of his neck, huh? Yes, I did. I'll try to remember that. <laughs> 144 South Benedict Place. Yeah? Look, Zora, that's the car. It's awfully big. It's just like the big mansion in The Strangler. 
You remember, that's the one where they use the trash compactor. Trash compactor? There you go. Oh, Watch Mark, you are a sweet boy. I know. <laughs> Keep telling that to Milton. Thank you. There you go. <sighs> Hello? I hope we're not too late. Wait, what are you going? Wait, where are you going? Get back here. That's against the law. That's breaking and entering. No, nothing's broken. It's only entering. Milton will find a loophole. Oh, no, he won't. No, you don't understand. Get M.A. and Sor, get out of here. Get. I didn't do it, Judge. Honest, they forced me. I didn't have a choice here. Aunt May, get over here. Get Aunt Zora. Will you get Aunt Zora? Did you hear that? I didn't hear anything. Listen, I really think we should go now. Come on, Aunt no, Zora. No, not now. It's just getting good. Zora. Zora. Come on. Where were you? Are you ready? Is he? It's hard to say. It looks like old cheese and crackers. Are you happy now? He's not in the compactor. He's not even home. In fact, there's nothing weird going on here except the three of us staring at some stranger's garbage. Now, can we go now? But, Mark, we have to look for clues. clues. It's a big house. Who cares if it's a big house? M.A. and Sora, come on. I'll do three to five here. You don't understand. I'm on parole. May, you know whose house this is? No, but he's not very tidy. Tom Ryan, the mystery writer. The Lou Winston mysteries. Kill me with your eyes. Yes, this must be his new book. What's it about? Ladies, we came in here looking for a body. There isn't a body. Now, we didn't come in here to get a sneak preview of the man's next novel. But it's Lou Winston, Mark. In the last no book... No murder, no reason to stay. Mark's right. You know, my neighbor Addie has a beautiful daughter, and she was Miss Arkansas last year, and you two would be perfect together. And Zora, if I get caught in here, I'm going back to the slammer now. I really think we should go. After we check the yard. Until we check the yard. Milton's going to be so sorry he wasn't here when he finds out whose house it was we broke into. Oh, yeah, he's going to be real broken up. May? Oh. We were right. We're right. Call the police. Where are you going? Someone's getting away. <laughs>
think so. Uh, 42, this is the base. Got a stalled vehicle license, X18434, corner of Landmark and Mason. Driver requests assistance. Delivered to station 16. Judge, I do realize we could have all been killed. If you really think about it, we were pretty lucky, you know? I mean, we're all in one piece. No bruises, no nothing. That's only metal. It's a couple of hundred bucks deductible on your insurance. Big deal. You're feeling lucky, are you? Judge, will you stop? If you stop for a second, you'll realize you're looking at this all wrong here. I mean, yeah, me and Aunt Zora, they were right about this thing. Let me get this straight. You're saying that I should be happy that you didn't listen to me? Yeah. You go poking your nose into other people's business. If you had listened to me, I'd wind up looking like a donkey. Yes, Judge. At least this way it doesn't look like you had information about a murder and you, you sat around and did nothing. Think about it. Oh, I see. I see. Getting the truck smashed up and having my insurance raised, not to mention my deductible is a small price to pay, so I'd look good. Yeah. Do you really believe this? You're just waiting to punch my lights out. Let me tell you something, McCormick. Stop that, Milton. If you're going to be angry at anyone, you should be angry with us. Mark was only trying to be helpful. Besides, we were right about the murder. You should be grateful. I think he's already <laughs> heard that speech, dears. Milton! You got a minute? Try not to be helpful. Don't pay any attention to him when he's like this. That's easy for you to say, but you two aren't going to be around here forever to protect me. The day of reckoning will come here, you know? You mean to tell me you had information on this and you didn't do anything? Well, that's a long story. It must be a real long story. Hard case, hard castle sitting on this kind of information. Who's sitting on it? We did what we had to do. McCormick ran the plates and we showed up here at the house. Well, we showed up a little late. We? Well, whatever. What did you get? Not much to hang a murder on. Coroner makes it a heart attack. This is the guy's prescription. Digitalis. Probably tried one lap too many. Did you listen to May and Zora? They overheard those guys at the airport. And I know them and you know them. That's why you didn't follow up on this. It's a dead lead. The guy had a heart attack. And you think it's a coincidence? For the moment, it's a heart attack. And I'm going to let that stick until I get the official report. I know. OK, thanks. But I'll tell you one thing. If it was a murder, whoever did it was awfully good. Look, I'm sorry it went down like it did. It got a little sloppy. You're the professional. What happened? Uh, I went without a hitch until the end, and some people walked right in on me, trying to be heroes. Well, did they tag up with you? No, we're okay. But I had to leave in his car. I dumped it a couple miles away. All right, I'll work it out. I'll get it back to his house. Uh, where is it? It's in the supermarket parking lot on the PCH. All right, I'll take care of it. All right, but look, don't let it sit too long. It's the only thing we got left hanging. Yeah. Is everything going to be okay? Yeah, just a little unexpected trouble. It's going to be fine. It sounded like he was upset. Well, that's his business. Something goes out of sequence, he figures the whole thing's falling apart. You see, Milton, there's the proof we didn't make this up. Yeah, I mean, it's just, just the pictures of two men. That's a very good picture. But a what? It's two guys. In a parking lot or something. Emmy, it's a terrific picture. It's nice and clear. And I didn't chop off their heads. No, but it doesn't prove anything. I mean, these could be two perfectly harmless men getting into their car. But they're not. They're killers. Milton C. Hardcastle, who do you think you are? I changed your diapers. No, no, please. When was the last time you took no for an answer? I bet you don't do that when the police tell you it's an open and shut case. It's got a point there, Judge. And after all, somebody did run from the scene of a heart attack. Come on. Are you helping again? No. I know who you are. You don't just give up and walk away. OK, but this is... One Christmas, Mark. We told Milton there weren't going to be any presents. He almost tore the house apart trying to find them. All I got was a sweater. It was getting cold, dear. You needed a sweater. But I wanted a bicycle. Well, nevertheless, you know as well as I do that this is not a coincidence. We heard these two men planning a murder. All right, I'll run the pictures. 
Isn't it good they had that special? Two prints for the price of one. Maybe the police will come up with something, because all we know, Tom Ryan is a mystery writer. That's it. We know he's married. We heard the one man tell the other man that his wife was going out of town. Yeah, but this is, uh, well, not much. Well, if he's a writer, then he has to have a publisher, right? Maybe his publisher knows something. Well, that's wonderful, Mark. Thank you. Very good. Isn't that good, Milton? Aren't you proud of Mark? Oh, I bet that was the first thing he was going to say. Weren't you, Judge? <laughs> yes. Now, I think it'd be a real good idea if you just wait for us, okay? Give us a break, Milton. This one's ours. They're your aunts. I just got here by adoption. Okay. Now, just let me do the talking, okay? We always do, dear. Yeah. Now, I don't want to start firing too many questions right away. Who's going to play the good cop? We don't do that, see? This guy's a source. He's not a suspect. I just want to get information, okay? Hello? Anybody home? Hello? Yes, can I help you with something? Don't try to wriggle out of this, Mr. Sutton. We have pictures. I don't know what you're talking about, Aunt May. But we heard him, Milton, with our own ears. Switching pills. No one home. He'll be all alone. I'm sorry about all this. Uh, Mr. Satin? Yes? Uh, Aunt May and Aunt Zori here were in an airport coffee shop, and they overheard you speaking to this man. And plotting to murder Tom Ryan. <laughs> oh, I see. They do that when they're cornered. <laughs> Could you two... Uh, no, Judge, your, your aunts are right. They did overhear me planning a murder. Call the police, Milton. But I'm afraid the only thing that they'd be able to arrest me for is bad plotting. You see, the man in this picture is Andrew Lowenberg. He's a writer. Um, a ghost writer would be more accurate. This is a manuscript for a book called Murder is a Four-Letter Word. So was my reaction to the first draft. So I called Andrew in to help me fix it. I've already got 15 grand sunk into this thing, and we were literally plotting a murder. We were trying to figure out how the, the criminal could get away with it scot-free. So if I'm guilty of anything, it's advancing this writer $15,000. Well, it's a perfectly logical mistake. I don't believe it. You want to sit in the back too? Judge, no matter how you look at this, Aunt May and Aunt Zora overheard these two guys talking about something. Now, we run the plates, we show up at the house, and Ryan's dead. Now, what's that all about? And then someone blows out of there, leaving half their tires behind? Come on. And what about the pills? These guys are talking about pills, and Ryan took Digitalis for his art. Everybody takes pills, McCormick. You want to know how much aspirin I took in the past month? You're not upset about this, are you? Ups Why should I be upset? I lose my truck, I get to drive this terrific Studebaker here. Sure. The police don't believe anything I say. We get to barge into a guy's office and point fingers at him. I'm having the time of my life here. Well, listen, I could tickle the back of your neck. Here, let me, let me just take Where you going here? Where you going? Home's that way. Police station's down here. What are we going to the police station for? I want to read the coroner's report. The guy's lying to us. Look, we made a deal, Mike. I'd publish the book, you make the hit. You did one hell of a job. So what have they got? What they got is pictures, real clear color pictures of you and me at the airport. I got their names. Did you get the car out of that parking lot? No, not yet. 
Well, then get it. I don't want it sitting around there. It's going to put a real dent in that heart attack theory. Look, I know what I'm supposed to do. I didn't screw this thing up. You worried about dents? Just take care of those people. I wonder what's taking Milton so long. Well, you've never read a coroner's report, Ansor. You spend half your time looking up the words in a medical dictionary. He'll be out soon. This isn't bad. Needs more vanilla. You always say it needs more vanilla. It gets so you can't hardly taste anything but vanilla. At least I know how many eggs to use. My cakes don't end up tasting like omelets. Now, girls, girls, that's for everybody we like. He'll be out, and as soon as he does, we'll find out what's going on, OK? I'm sorry, Mark. This is what we do when we're on edge. We bake. Oh. It's very good therapy. You and Milton ought to try it. And May, if we were to bake, every time the judge got a little tense, we'd be able to open up a 24-hour donut stand. Only three eggs. I hope Ella Mae Thompson never hears about this. She bakes a marvelous angel food cake. It's a mix. No. I saw the box. You did. I got it. Best news I had all week. Well, brace yourself. They're making an angel food cake. What did you find out? Nothing. Oh, we could always make a pie. No, I mean not anything. They didn't find any drugs of any kind in Ryan's system. No arsenic? No strychnine? No nothing? I wish I knew why this was good news. Wait a minute, I'm with you, Judge. They didn't poison him. They didn't give him anything. Are we missing something? Eggs. Wait a second. Ryan was taking digitalis, but they didn't find any digitalis in his system. They didn't find anything, right? You get to cut the cake. That's what they did. They didn't give him poison. They gave him pills without anything in it. Sugar pills. Some. Milton, I promise you, as soon as we get some eggs, I'm going to bake you a devil's food cake. Did you call the police? <sighs> yeah, I left a message for Frank, but I want to go back to that house. There's something I want to check there. Wait a minute. You're not going without us. It's your case. Get your coats. <laughs> I've been through this already. Well, we're probably better off. I'm going to check the pool. For? Well, you remember an ice pick. The killer dropped a matchbook that had the name of his hotel on it. But we already know who the killer is. Oh, then what am I looking for? Maybe. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm Judge Hardcastle. My associates and I are a friend of Tom Ryan's. May I ask you what you're doing here? I live here. I'm Tom's wife. OK, Milt, I know it's starting to smell, but it's still theory. An excellent theory. That makes any difference. Frank, you read the coroner's report. Now, there was no digitalis in Ryan's system. Somebody must have slipped him a placebo. At least check the pills. We did. It's legit. They switched them back. By the way, Frank, if they were placebos, then somebody switched them, because if they were real, you would have found digitalis in the system, right? Come on, Milt. That's a good question. I know it is. All right, get me up to speed on this pool cover thing. Mrs. Ryan says they don't use it. It's a dirt collector. That's a great line. Yeah. Well, the cover had water in it. And it rained the morning we found Ryan's body. So I guess somebody closed it. Probably with Mr. Ryan in it. Very thin, Milt. Mm -hmm. That's good. Ryan goes for his morning swim. He's off his medication. Somebody closes a cover on him. Coronary. Milton thought of this all by himself. We're very proud of him. All right, I just need 
one more piece. Who, why, what's the motive? Lisa, I love you. It wasn't supposed to turn out like this, Larry. It was supposed to be Tom. Just Tom. Now he's going after four other people. I know. Don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. But these people have pictures. They can put me right in the middle of this thing. But after he kills them? <sighs> he's cornered. He's nervous. How do you know he's not going to move on us? Look, we're not his problem. Get your coat. We're gonna go pick up Tom's car. Just like the bee handler and the game show host in Gravewatch. Hurry up, they're getting away. When will I see you? As soon as I get rid of the car, I'll call you. supposed to happen i don't know we pushed enough buttons somebody's bound to panic and do something tom found out about my uh, relationship with larry he was going to pull all of his publishing and take it to another house. So Satin came up with the idea of hiring a professional? No, uh, the idea walked into his office. The man he hired had written a book. He was a professional killer. Larry agreed to publish the book in exchange. You said the man he hired? Did you know his name? No, Larry kept all of that to himself. He figured the less I knew, the better. Look, whoever he is, he killed Larry. He knows the four of you are involved. He may know I'm involved. She's right. If this guy is getting a little winky, I certainly wouldn't want to be the cause of his problems. Frank. I don't know where we can go here. She doesn't know anything. Oh, we've got this jumpy trigger going around with our names in his notebook. Did you get anything back on the pictures? Nothing local. I sent out state and federal. You know how swift they are. I'm going to have to take her down to the station. You guys want to go home. I'll try and push for the photos and see what happens. I'm going to have to take you downtown, miss. I'll send a couple of my guys down to your place. Um, if I were you, I'd like to do a play a real long game of Scrabble. Thanks, Frank. If you keep this up, I'm going to gain 100 pounds. It's soothing. Milton's right. We're not going to bake our way out of this one. We've got to do something. I didn't even say that. We are doing something. What we're doing is staying out of the line of fire. That's hiding, Milton. And I know you too well to know that you're not a hider. Do you remember Milton's seventh birthday party? And May, I know you love to reminisce, but I'm a grown man, OK? <clears throat> Do you want some more milk for your cookies there, Judge? Then why are we just sitting here? May, stop that. It's because of us, isn't it? 
It's because you're afraid we'll get hurt. You are just chomping at the bit to get out of here and do something. But you're sitting around eating cookies because you're worrying about us. I thought you were going to make another batch of these. Milton, the police are right here, and they can look out for us. And if you two have something else to do, do it. We'll be fine. You know, they're right, Judge. I've been thinking. Don't think. Milton. Look, Judge, we're not doing anything here but heading for a major sugar depression. OK. You two promise you'll stay out of trouble. I want to get back to that publishing house. Milton, you have my word. Nothing bad will happen to us. <sighs> And you keep your eye on them. That's what we're here for, Judge. Good luck! Well, you boys must be hungry, and we've just made a whole batch of new cookies. Sounds good to me. <laughs> oh, you two are such good-looking boys. Don't you think so, oh, Zora? Yes, they are. And oh, young. <laughs> yeah. Don't you step here. Our friend Addie has a daughter. She was Miss Arkansas last year. You should meet her. I know you two would get along just so wonderful. You really trust them not to get into any trouble? No, I don't trust them. But if we stayed there, they'd bake us into the ground. When they get nervous, they cook. I've heard. Besides, the cops are there. We wouldn't do any good sitting around. Anyway, if this guy wants to get his manuscript, he's got to... Are you listening? Yeah, I'm listening. If this guy wants to get his manuscript, he's got to move. And we sit around and wait for the cops to get something back on those pictures, then he's going to have time to clear his tracks and get out. Balcony. I'm talking about your pride. What? Face it, Judge, you were wrong about this whole thing. Aunt May and Aunt Zora, though, they had it wired from the beginning. Oh, they did. Well, you've been having a great time with them, haven't you? Huh? The boys' charm getting you off the hook. Let me tell you something. They're going to go home, and when they do. Well, we did it. Milton, is something wrong? Is Mark hurt? Yeah, he's a little angry at me. Do you believe that? Angry at Mark? Why, if it hadn't been for Mark, we would have listened to you and never cracked this case. Now, Milton, there's no reason to be angry with Mark, is there?
Now, you sure you got a ride when you get back to Little Rock? Milton, stop fussing. Aunt Ada's going to pick us up. Mm, well, you got everything now? Oh, you've already checked 16 times. <laughs> oh, my book, I left it upstairs. Well, I'll get it. I'll get it. Oh, it's such a stir. Well, he's a little upset to see you go, that's all. I still say we could have driven to the airport and returned the car. Uh, no, 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 no. You take the cab, Aunt Zora. We'll drop the car off tomorrow, okay? Oh, you're a dear. If you're ever in Clarence. I know, Addie's daughter, Miss Arkansas, blonde hair, beautiful. Got it. Oh, thank you, Milton. <clears throat> well, let's go home. Yeah. Give my best to Aunt Sylvia and Uncle Dan, huh? Oh, we will, Milton. How are Pat and Paul and the seven kids? Eight. Oh, eight, yeah. They're fine. Uh, if you see Mrs. Thompson, you can tell her I stopped biting my nails. And if you bake any extra cranberry bread on Thanksgiving, don't forget to send me a couple of loaves, huh? We will, Milton. Thank you so much. You're still my favorite. I love you, too. I'm gonna miss you both. Come see us at Christmas. Oh, I sure will. Oh, good. You think he'll really come for Christmas? Oh, I hope not. I love Milton, but visits with him are so hectic. Well... McCormick! McCormick! <laughs>